This conference will now be recorded. I'd like to call to order the August 21st, 2023 regular council meeting to order at 7 p.m. All rise for the business. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I think we have an amended uh, to the agenda tonight in addition to another public hearing, so um, everyone's on that, so I'll ask for any other additions or corrections before I ask for a motion. Okay, anyone want to make a motion to accept the, the agenda tonight with the additional public hearing? I move to accept the amended agenda with the additional public hearing. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Norman. Can you call the roll, please, Stephanie? All right, Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councillor Ash? Aye. Councillor Webb? Aye. Councillor Norman? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Are there any presentations tonight? Okay, we'll move right into our first public hearing. And. I'll begin it at 7.04 p.m. Public hearing is now open for the purpose of closing out a community development block grant from Business Oregon and to obtain citizens' views about the project and to take comments about the local government's performance. The procedure I would like to follow tonight is in this manner. A, read the disclosure statement. B, hear the staff report. C, hear public testimony. D, close hearing. E, city council deliberation. So I'll begin with the uh, disclosure statement. Ladies and gentlemen, I call this hearing to order at 7.04 p.m. My name is Mayor Rick Hobart. I am the chairman of the city council for Vernonia. Our role is to conduct public hearings and to make decisions about matters in Vernonia. Members of the City Council are to be unbiased. Before the start of the hearing, I will ask the members of the City Council whether they have any potential conflicts, such as family, financial, or business relationship with regard to the land in question. If such a potential conflict exists, I will ask whether the council member in question believes he or she is without actual bias or whether he or she would like to step down during the case review. A copy of the rules of procedure for the hearing, the agenda for today's hearing, copies of the staff reports are available upon request. Any person with an interest in today's agenda item may offer relevant oral and or written testimony, but please only speak when I identify you for that purpose. Please make sure your testimony is relevant to applicable Standards for the item in question. Please do not repeat testimony offered by yourself or earlier witnesses. If I think your testimony is irrelevant or repetitious, I may interrupt and ask you to, to continue with another subject. Demonstrations from the audience are prohibited. Please refrain from them. Comments from the audience will not be part of the record. Any questions? That concludes the introduction. Does any city council wish to declare any potential conflict of interest? No, then would the staff please proceed with the summary of their written report? Okay, so we don't have a written report. This uh, public hearing is basically, we're nearing completion and final sign off of the design CDBG super <laughs> system upgrade design project. <clears throat> so we have to hold a public hearing to kind of ask the public at large how we did on the project, if they had issues with the project, which we don't believe anyone has. Um, 
And so it's kind of a formality for you guys to hold it and give the public a chance to comment on it. Um, so that is our staff report. That's what we're doing here tonight. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the council? Now is the time for public testimony. Does any member of the public wish to speak or present testimony on this agenda item? Thank you for your for the testimony. <laughs> we'll now close the public hearing and hear from the city council. Councilors, do any of you have any questions of staff or wish to present any thoughts on the agenda item? If not, I will um, thank the council and entertain a motion uh, to move forward. All right, I'll make a motion. Make a motion to authorize the city administrator to move forward with completion of the wastewater design project funded with community development block grant funds from Oregon Business Development Park Development Department. There we go. So moved. Anchor Councilor Webb. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilor Ash. Would you call the roll, please, Dick? Norman? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councilor Webb? Uh, aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Wagner? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Stephanie. That concludes the first public hearing tonight, and we'll close that out at 7 10 p.m. Moving on to the next uh, public hearing. I will begin this at 7.11 p.m. Public hearing is now open for the purpose of considering application for the 2023 Community Development Block Grant from Business Oregon for sewer systems upgrade. The procedure I would like to follow tonight is in this manner. <coughs> Read the disclosure statement, hear the staff report, hear public testimony, close the hearing, city council deliberation. Ladies and gentlemen, I call this hearing to order. My name is Mayor Rick Hobart. I am the chairman of the city council of Vernonia. Our role is to conduct public hearings and to make decisions about matters in Vernonia. Members of the City Council are to be unbiased. Before the start of the hearing, I will ask the members of the City Council whether they have any potential conflicts, such as family, financial, or business relationship with regard to the land in question. If such a potential conflict, conflict exists, I will ask whether the council member in question believes he or she is without actual bias, or whether he or she would like to step down during the case review. A copy of the rules of procedure for the hearing, the agenda for today's hearing, and copies of the staff reports are, avail are available on request. Any person with an interest in today's agenda item may offer relevant oral and or written testimony, but please only speak when I identify you for that purpose. Please make sure your testimony is relevant to applicable standards for the item in question. Please do not repeat testimony offered by yourself or earlier witnesses. If I think your testimony is irrelevant or repetitious, I may interrupt and ask you to continue with another subject. Demonstrations from the audience are prohibited. <clears throat> Please refrain from them. Comments from the audience will not be part of the record. Any questions? That concludes the introduction. Does any city council Wish to declare any potential conflict of interest? Clarification. My cousin's property is involved in this, so. He's a distant, distant enough relative, and also this will not financially enable him to develop his property, so there is no benefit or. Okay. 
So I just wanted to make sure I didn't have a potential conflict. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Council Rep. Anybody else? Okay, and then the staff will pre uh, proceed with the report. Here, come on. Um, so, in a similar way, there's no official report, but following what Josette had mentioned, we're going to be applying for a construction grant off of what we planned for the construction grant or um, design grant. Um, the map that's part of the packet shows in general what the design plan is. Um, you can see that part of the improvements deal with the collective street area sewer that overflows at times of high flow. It also incorporates the springboard lane sewer system it comes down towards the Adams Avenue and Cougar Street intersection where there will be a new pump station and that will provide sanitary connection to the sewer lagoon. With this new system, the existing Bear Creek and Rock Creek crossings will be renovated and removed and there will also be the replacement of the culvert in Bear Creek with a new uh, precast concrete bridge. Um, in general, this is meant to renovate the existing sewer system to help with capacity issues. And um, I'm also here to help with any questions if there are any. Triple flow. That sewer line through the Cousins property is really shallow right now. So I think Josette said you found you can go to a manhole lower down or they didn't start as low as they could have when they put in that project. So the new line will be deeper. Correct, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, throughout the entire length of the sewer, there will be adequate cover starting at 30 inches. And then at the tail end of it, where it meets the pump station, it will be about 24 feet deep. So the entire thing will be deeper and steeper and a larger pipe diameter to meet capacity requirements. So which, are we gonna have some street impacts of uh, construction, uh, Park Drive, uh, Adams? In Adams, yes, there will be some street impacts while trenching is happening. Um, I mean, we're gonna put in new line? A new sewer line, yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, it'll go in the same alignment as the existing one. So they'll be essentially pumping from one existing manhole to the next while the section in play is being installed replaced um, so the sewer service should be continuous not impacting residents but there will be some minor traffic impacts well going through a street and if i may uh, where where are we going to site that pump station exactly next to the existing substation so at the oh, how about the substation it shows it in adam street here on this yeah, the, it's the square back off yeah, the line. Yeah, it's a smaller square. So in, it's in the Cougar Street oh, right Cougar. of way. Okay, Cougar Street, yeah. Near the intersection. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's never going to go through because right on the back side of that Cougar Street, a lot of it is well, the Crick and County and City by outlots, which can never be constructed upon. Yeah. So we'd never put a road through. And I assume that's an elevated, or it kind of has a gen set and everything elevated for flood? Yes, the actual dry well, sorry, wet well for the pump itself will be below ground and flood proof, and then control panel and backup generator will be elevated above, yeah. at least a foot above base flood elevation. What will be above ground, sorry? Um, Control panel and backup generator. Any other questions for staff? Susan, do you have any questions for staff? Thank you for asking. I do not at this time. Okay, thank you. Now is the time for public testimony. Does any member of the public wish to speak or present testimony on this agenda item? No, thank you for your testimony. We will now close the public hearing and hear from the city council. We'll close the public hearing at 7, 17 p.m.
Public hearing is now closed. Counselors, do you have any questions for staff or wish to present any thoughts on the agenda item? I have one. Yep. What kind of easement do we have through Weller's property for the sewer? Is that an already locked in easement or? We're still clarifying on that. I believe there is some established prescriptive easement. However, he has been continuously open to working with us and I think establishing another easement would be feasible. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, Susan? I do have a comment. Um, I would like to thank the city administrator and staff for uh, proposing this. CDBG is a wonderful way to provide infrastructure um, monies to a community and uh, ease the burden on, on the, the community members themselves through taxes or other fees that would otherwise be borne by the community members. And so thank you very much and I'm excited to see this move forward. Okay, thank you, Susan. With that being said, would anyone like to make a motion to move forward, have the city administrator move forward with this block grant? I will make a motion to authorize the city administrator to move forward with applying for a 2023 community development block grant from the Business Oregon for sewer system upgrades. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Councilman uh, Webb. Uh, I have a quick question. Sorry. Um, is this for the September 30th? Yes. And it, yes. clarifying question, it does not require a overall public hearing, just a specific to this grant because it's public works. What do you mean an overall? This so, is what CDBG told us was required. Okay, that's all I ask. That's thank you for the clarification. Um, sure. Aye. Okay. Councillor Webb? Aye. Councillor Ash? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councillor Norman? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, staff. Okay, Mayor's report. I understand the citizens of the month is going to be put off till the month of September. So, um, Councilor Committee meeting reports tonight. I have one, if nobody else does. Anybody else have one? No. No. Nope. Okay, I went to the senior board meeting. And I um, have a couple things. Unfortunately, somebody cut the lock off the dumpster on August 10th behind the thrift shop. And so it's, it's kind of an ongoing problem. I think there was some talk about um, Teresa was gonna maybe get a, a game camera back in behind the building there to see if we can find out who's doing it. <clears throat> Um, let's see, there was also some talk of um, the Lions Club taking, not taking over the lease actually, but being a part of the lease um, for the scout cabin, if you will. Um, and they, their responsibilities would be um, maintenance uh, inside and out and, and, um, Doing the um, reservation reservations, um, and, and we'd have a key for that, and making sure that it's clean and and it's cleaned up, and, and so um, it's kind of in the planning stages now, and we'll address it in our next uh, lines meeting in September. But uh, they gave me that duty to take that back to the lines and see if they're interested, and it would also. Uh, be a, me a new meeting place for our club. So, yeah. 
So that's a good deal. Um, we approved a, a tough shed to be built by tough shed itself in Portland. I'm not sure about the size of it, but it's fairly, fairly it's, good size. I think it's 10 by 16. Yeah, so we approved that. Uh, to be placed, uh, it would be on the north end of the building by the generator, I think, close by. And by the, off the parking lot a little bit. Okay. There's, they were talking about. We also approved uh, um, blinds in the interior of the windows. Um, so that, that'll be nice to, especially for next budget season. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, the thrift shop is now on, open on Mondays now. It was before, so they're open five days a week or six days a week, you know. And then we're having our senior picnic on Friday, September 15th. We're having it catered by Holy Smoker and there'll be music and it starts at 11.30 p.m. So, um, and is that at the building, Rick? That's at the, at the Bergenfield, at the senior center, Bergenfield room and cafeteria. Yeah. Well, that's all I have on that. So. Um, Parks Committee just canceled this coming week's meeting, so we, they won't be meeting until September, <coughs> late September. Oh, Parks just canceled theirs too. <laughs> Didn't have a quorum. That time of year, everyone's yeah, busy yeah. on vacation and gone. But... And the summer. So, okay. Any topics from the floor tonight? None? Is that agenda for acceptance? Is that agenda for approval? City Council meeting minutes for August 7th, 2023. And City Council meeting minutes for August 15th, 2023. Any, oh, go ahead. You don't have to stay. She has so much to stay. Oh yeah. I'm just letting you guys. Yes, you can we're, sneak we're out. done with your stuff. You don't have to. We won't be offended. <laughs> I <love> like, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure how much more was going to be included in this. You never know. So <laughs> it, it just feels good with more people. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting too. I just don't know how much I can necessarily offer to you. <laughs> thank you, Robert, for your work. Yeah. Thank you for the hearing. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, let's see. It's okay. okay. See ya. Oh, she's <laughs> asked. <laughs> Bye. Drive safe. Thank you. I won't be asked quick, right? You know. <laughs> Some of my, my purpose. <laughs> okay. We're ready to move. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, looking for a motion if there's no uh, questions or discussion on those two meeting minutes. I'll move to approve the consent agenda for approval. So moved. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Councilor Norman. Would you call the roll, please, Stephanie? Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councillor Norman? Aye. Councillor Webb? Aye. Councillor Wagner? Aye. Motion carried. Any unfinished business? No. New business approval of police, city, police chief contract. <coughs> oh, weird. So everyone have a copy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Sorry. So there was a staff report uh, that's with it, but that's okay. So this is the draft. Um, oh, the last public hearing? No, for this. Oh. We, I just looked at it because I was oh. going to reference it. But, sure. Um, so we met back, I believe it was June 10th, that we met to discuss um, the employment contract for the chief of police position. Um, you guys have had some um, items you wanted to be added in. 
um, basically that they would be a working chief with regular en engagement with the citizens. The employees shall be on patrol as time allows, including the not limited to the duties and responsibilities outlined in the chief's job description or other duties as authorized by me. And then um, we had discussed the section, the termination section. You guys had asked it to more mimic my employment agreement with a with cause and a without cause um, section. Um, and then, and with the sell with the severance pay kind of matching. So those have all been included. Um, we did take out the stepping back into sergeant because if the point of separation of employment with someone, you want them to not be employed anymore. You don't want them to go back into the union. That is not the point of the either with cause or without cause termination. So Ruben um, had wanted that to be removed because he's like, that doesn't really work in an employment agreement under the termination heading because you're not really then terminated. So mm -hmm. he had um, wanted that removed. And then within that, the termination and how the, there's a little bit in 7.1, a little bit of clarification, the last sentence that upon termination without cause, the employee shall be provided with then accrued salary and payment of accrued vacation time and that accrued sick time hours will be reported to PERS. In the previous contract, those sick time hours were paid out or referenced that they would be paid out. And that is not how any employee in the city has it. So we're sticking with the employment handbook of sick time hours that remain when someone leaves us or is terminated from us, gets reported to PERS as hours their retirement, but it does not get out. So that was another clarifier. Um, and those are the only changes we that you guys had proposed that we included in here. So do you guys have any questions or further corrections or clarifications you want to see in there? Susan, any questions or Additions to the this? Thank you, no. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Donald. Your definition of interim chief, is that full-time chief or part-time chief? So typically, um, where are you seeing that, Donald? All right, on number one, employment. Yeah, so chief. that, um, so let me go. I guess in term to mean doesn't mean full time. Just understanding exactly what you're saying. Yeah, so I believe the reason this first draft has interim chief is because I believe if we follow the process we were planning on, which was posting internally first, that's typically what we do, see if anyone we already employ is interested, that the potential candidate would need to take some classes so he wouldn't be classified as the chief of police he would be an interim chief meaning okay. installed but not yet fully and that's what the professional growth section also references because there are a few more um, credits that he would have to take he has supervisory he has the management stuff but there are a couple credits that dpsst would require before he would be a classified chief of police okay yeah and that was the way it was with the prior chief. He had to, we, we had uh, so much time to turn around and then have those completed. Okay. So my staff report said, if you guys are interested and this looks great for you, I'm trying to remember, if it looks good to you, then you would direct me to move forward with the process which would mean we post internally, we do the interview, all of the same things that happen with regular hiring. If you do not like this or do not want it, then you would not make a motion to uh, direct me to move forward. Okay, everyone understand that? 
Um, I think it incorporates everything we asked for. So I yeah. think it looks good and I okay. appreciate it. Yeah. Do you agree as well, Susan? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. So with all that being said, would anyone like to make a motion to have staff move forward in this process? Um, I'll move that we have staff move forward with this employment agreement and proceed as necessary. Thank you. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Councilor Webb. Thank you. Councilor Norman? Aye. Aye. Councilor Ash? Aye. Councilor Webb? Aye. Councilor Wagner? Aye. Motion carried. Very good. Moving forward with that, that's good. Okay. This is from the departments. Okay. Ordinances and resolutions. <laughs> Any correspondence? Okay. City admin report. Okay. So um, this is last week, right, when I wrote this. So we will be testing uh, Marianne's pump to see if we can get material, water, whatever is still down there up this week. Um, and if we can't, then DEQ will bring their own pumping mechanism. And if we can get something, then they'll just come out and do the test test collection um, that will help us move forward with the decommissioning of the old dump site. Um, the grandstands demo project is now complete. Mitch and Tim spent a little bit of the end of last week and then today um, clearing out the stormwater swale. That was kind of our last ugly spot. Um, they removed the construction fencing, which the weeds had all grown through, and they got it back down. Um, Lower Columbia Engineering had offered to plant it, so we need to put um, like two and a half to five yards of like a small pea gravel on the bowl of it, and then some growing media, and then it will be planted in native grasses and things that will basically filter the stormwater coming off the skate park before it goes into the ditch and goes to the Rock Creek. Um, connected to that, I did get an offer from Bill Hawkins. If we would buy the culvert, he would put in the help put in with his people and the softball people that can do excavation, the culvert from that outlet to the creek because right now it's kind of a ditch in the middle of everything that is their camping area. Um, and so Jeff's working on getting the dimensions of that. And then we're working on what the grade would need to be to get it to Rock Creek, not have any future issues. So that's moving forward. Um, the Lake Docks application is in. I resubmitted the application answering all the clarifying questions today. Their meeting is on the 28th. The review team. Um, so I answered their questions that were related to is it ADA, you know, all the little tweaks they wanted to the application. Um, so that's been resubmitted and fingers crossed we'll be uh, fully funded for that. Um, the other the other one you already know we're still typically we respect expect that in the next couple months we'll hear if we were awarded the SCA grant, which was basically multiple streets and chip sealing a number of streets and kind of doing an all over town project. The guardrail has been repaired. I sent yet another email to the Storm Ready City meteorologist asking, hey, I emailed you a month ago about an ETA for our signs being produced. Can you give me an ETA? I even called her and left a message. No response. So I don't know, then <laughs> we'll get it. Um, we found out that our FEMA CAV visit will take place on September 27th. Um, so that's the community assistance visit where we have to show them how we collect the floodplain development permits, all of the paperwork that how we maintain that those regulations for FEMA, and then we'll do the afternoon will be site visits. Um, to different properties to make sure they're 
we're following the rules. And Councillor Wagner, I did, in going through old official letters, found a closeout letter for the first mm -hmm. cab. Woo! That I realized why it was hidden in a file. It was during COVID that they sent me the letter. And so I did find it. So we, we had to have the first 2007 community assistance visit was closed out administratively by FEMA in the light of COVID. I see why. Maybe they were just like, you know, all the emergency management were done. All these old ones where people needed one more thing were done. So they did close that one out. Josette, I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Will this um, visit uh, impact the the uh, 40 lots that can be closed out in, in recording at, at, at the title company? It, Will it affect that process? No. Okay. So this community assistance visits are really, um, basically communities do them to keep their right to allow their citizens to be in the NFIP, which is the National Flood Insurance Program, which gives our citizens cheap cheap flood insurance for following the rules of FEMA. Oh. If a storm was to come in, we are mitigating the damage that could be done to our city to the best of our ability following all of FEMA's rules. Um, and then it also, you, you, we could go one step further and be uh, a community that basically proves to FEMA what they're doing and you potentially can get reduction for your insurance mm. for your citizens. That takes a little bit more. Um, you have to, you know, do certain elements throughout the year, kind of notifying people, do community education. And I think, you know, potentially logistically in the next year or so, we could probably start to become that kind of community and potentially get the insurance um, reduction for them. There was, when I went to flood training, this is years back, there was a there was a community in Texas that had had their insurance policy from all of their activities. And they were like the biggest one of anybody, but they had gotten their insurance reduced by 30% for their citizens by doing education, outreach, you know, really keeping the code and making sure nobody did anything that was gonna negatively affect their neighbor. But it does take work to get those rates reductions. That would be helpful because mine's going up every year. Yeah, they're going up every year. So now seems like a time where if we can logistically have the manpower in City Hall, and I think with Ben, we can do a lot of mapping and informational and kind of hit some of their marks, but we'll look into that. Thank you. Um, on Thursday, August 17th, Councillor Webb and was there when Robert Watts did the preliminary investigation of the lake leak um, and the council will be updated at the meeting. So I will let Councillor Webb share with you what they found. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, before we started, I resurrected the uh, monitoring point, the pipes were, was discharging underneath the existing outflow culvert and we, we had 75 gallons a minute out of that pipe, plus there was still some water escaping around my little dam, but maybe 10 or 15 gallons, maybe there. But, um, yeah, we, we had to do the work a little different than we originally planned because the lake was full <laughs> and it was a little higher. So, but Robert did a real good job. He's good to work with. He's an old hand, so he knows what he's doing. Um, got in there and started digging, and I think the first hole down. He went, he put it seven, eight foot down. Wow! And about the size of your fist, looked like a road pole coming in from the side from the lake. And I think we could see one on going out the other side. So, so we basically did that across that face, working back towards the uh, overflow culvert. And four or five of those big holes we encountered across there. It was interesting. A couple of times when we were in there, it actually came up out of the bottom, coming up at us. So I don't know, they're down pretty deep. So 
And then as he went, he just repacked it. And it's that old blue clay. Of course, you know, with the water being coming in through the holes and then also some seeping in from the lake over the top, he kind of put it, tried to make a little dike as he went to keep it out of there, but it was kind of like pushing jello in there. But it got compacted really good that way. So, um, for the culvert, uh, it, it got a lot firmer ground, dried up more, wasn't, wasn't wet like we were encountering. And the same with on the pump end, we went, we moved back down there and did one more excavation down there. Um, that did kind of the same. It, both ends seemed to be pretty solid. So we think we really defined the area where it's at. So today I went down and measured what's coming out of the pipe and I had 6.8 gallons. Wow. So it significantly cut it down. And I think there's probably more there moving through the ground than just what's coming out through the hole. Because I did work my way down toward the river. And whereas last year off the one side, there was a lot of rivulets coming out of the ground and coming into this little <clears throat> channel that's cut over the years, that seemed to be gone. So I think we made a significant improvement um, and we've got eyes on what the problem is and we batted around some ideas of if it comes back of, I mean, the one simple one was just redig it and pour it full of concrete. Uh, Robert had a suggestion, there's these concrete panels that you can actually buy preformed and just dig it down and slide those in and then pack back in front of them. And he's also had kind of experience with just using like pit run or something for a barrier to a rodent. They, when they hit rock like that, they don't want to go, they won't continue digging through. So, you know, there's a, maybe a combination of things. So let's just cross our fingers and this goes away for a while. <laughs> so yeah. It took uh, just slightly under two hours to do the job. Wow. So. Okay. And I think I had every public crew staff, <laughs> Jonathan, visit me while I was right. There. They're all checking out. But they they get there and then they get a phone call on. Oh, we got a leak and we got to go. <laughs> Thank you, Dale, for being yeah. an integral part of that. And I'm sure you're pleased with all the work you do down there to <laughs> keep it going. So thanks again. So um, we did get some things. The electricians were here last week and they did get some things tackled. Um, they completed the police records room light. They installed the new security bar box for the skate park lights so that we quit having people override and have the lights on all night for free for all skate. Um, they had to rewire a plug at Vernoni Cares for the new freezer they got, had a locking plug so that someone just couldn't pull it out of the wall. And then they also repaired and replaced the light in the men's restroom at Vernonia Lake had gone kaput. So they repaired that. They still do have um, the highway lighting, the picnic shelter light, and then I'm waiting on Blue Mountain to give me the specs for the cameras. So Robert, or so um, Blake, and help us pick out what size light for depending on what electricity he'll have to run out there. He's proposing we just do a fiberglass light pole. Um, he says those have worked really well with cameras. They typically have enough void in the middle and then they're easy to cut through where you need to pop it out. Instead of getting one with a whole bunch of holes already preset, you're kind of stuck um, or metal. So that's what we're looking into, but we're still waiting on the uh, specifications. Do you guys have any other questions for me? Any questions, Councilor Wagner? No, I do not. Okay. Thank you, Josette. Yes. Yeah. Items from the Mayor and Councilors. I have one. I'd like to thank the city of Vernonia for helping me. I believe it was on Thursday afternoon late. I was up mowing at the church and and I found a, a water leak 
Um, on our side, um, only about a foot from the meter, and it was pretty, it was, uh, that old meter was spinning around pretty good, so I called uh, City, and Chris came up there and helped me locate the, uh, the leak, and it was about three feet down. It was just a little, little hole in one of the fittings that we had, and I think there's some, when those sidewalks were installed, there's a bunch of pit running underneath there. So anyway, to make a long story short, Alan Hine and I fixed it and I uh, covered it up today. And, and uh, so it's all fixed. And we do have a nice green spot in our lawn. And, <laughs> but at least we got it stopped. And so, especially during our curtailment. Yeah. So, um, Thanks again for Chris's help and and uh, let's see anything else I have. That's about it. So, Dale, I did a walk through on our McNair Forest today. Um, really rough year for trying to plant trees. Uh, we're down to about seventy three percent survival, is what I. Yeah, I did today, and I did the walk through today for the tubes and yeah. bamboo. But um, well, we need some rain. Hard on them. Um, we talked before. West Oregon Electric's going to work on the trail. I did see the day we were down there doing the lake leak. Um, one of the contractors was in there for vacuum truck. Uh, I thought maybe they were going to pull the cable through, but I heard them say something about pulling. But maybe they maybe they lost one of the one of the pull. Yeah, the what do you call that material? Yeah. Yeah. So they because I haven't seen any more activity since. But no. So. Hopefully that gets done here pretty soon. Get that trail back in the yeah. shop. Yeah. Would it behoove us to contact them? And no, Don wants to get it done before fall. I think okay. he's just waiting on. It's not Westo workers that are the workers on that. Oh, I the see. Contractor that has to come back out and finish it now that they have the cabling. They got to pull through. Okay. Fire through. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I will thank Paula Hansen for our cute new button. <laughs> yeah. um, also, I'll thank Rob Davis for um, kind of staying on top of bands as needed to keep us safe. I think that's really important. So grateful for that. Okay. Okay. Any, anybody else have anything before we go to action item summary? Okay. ITS, great. All right. Um, so we have, I'm going to post on the bulletin board the September 15th, 11.30 a.m. Senior Center Senior Picnic on the bulletin board to get all the seniors there. Um, staff's gonna move forward with the CDBG application for the sewer system upgrades. And staff's gonna move forward with the hiring process for the chief of police. Okay. That's all I had. Okay, and just to remind um, for the uh, holiday, Monday, September 4th, in service of Labor Day, City Hall will be closed. We will have our regular council meeting on September 5th at 7 p.m. With that being said, I thank you for participating and being here tonight, and thank you for being a part of our meeting, Susan. I'll adjourn the meeting at 7.50 p.m. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. First day of school should be an observed holiday. <laughs>